Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. This is the Vikings Garage, and today, well, today, I got some parts right there that we, together, are going to tackle with a breeze. With a breeze? A breeze? A breeze? With ease. We're going to tackle with ease. No for breeze. So the parts in question here today are actually just a drive belt. Yes, I have some extra parts in there, but that's because I always like to complicate things. But you guys are going to never mind that part of the job. The key for today's episode is to tackle your drive belt by yourself at home without any issues whatsoever. All you got to do is follow my steps and you too should conquer this. No problem. Okay, so let me show you what uh, parts are we referring to here. This is actually the part number you want to get. This is your drive belt. It's a genuine Toyota part. Uh, made in the USA. Look at that. But, just on a side note, okay, if you do find a belt from Gates, I think that's a very good belt as well. Why not? Uh, as you guys know from previous episodes, I do go the aftermarket route sometimes. So, my point is, if your Toyota dealership does not have the belt, don't be afraid to get a Gates belt from your local parts store. Now, you might be asking yourself, what's in these boxes? Well, guys, these are idler pulleys. As you guys saw from the initial clip, I do have a lot of uh, squeaking going on, a lot of belt noise, and I personally believe it is a, one of these guys. But mind you, even uh, these simple uh, noises can be a little annoying, and there are things we're not tackling today, but we're going to at least give it a shot, right? Uh, the belt tensioner is not being replaced today. That could create a squeak, and there's an array of other things. I personally actually think that my water pump is also making a little bit of noise but let's get let's dive right into it and let's dissect this step by step it's not as hard as it looks so actually the very first thing that you can do is pop this guy up slide it out and get it out of the way what you want to do is make yourself room to work because you are going to be arms deep in this engine bay now when i say arms deep guys i actually am referring to your entire arm i am wearing long sleeves for a reason you should too you will see in a second why i'm doing that so first things first i don't care how many of these belts you have done what you want to do is draw out the way the belt is this is of course guys before you take your belt off that is what i'm doing here I have done hundreds of these. Actually, I forgot how many I've done, and I still do it. Draw it out so that you don't have to remember because, guys, remember one thing. Um, we have more important things to remember than which routing does your belt go. So if you do what I just told you, write it down, chances are you're going to get it back in the same exact way. Now, tools for the job, honestly. This, and try not to laugh, is all you need. Uh, long extension ratchet with your 14 mil socket at the end try to get a socket as shallow as possible and you'll understand in a second why right, let's get our shard out of the way here uh, angles on this job are going to be a little difficult to show because of the location but let's see if we can get a little pointy pointy thing so not this guy so this is an idler that's your tensioner the one below it Let's try to get a close-up of that. That guy there is where you're going to attach your ratchet, right? And it's always counterclockwise, guys. So you can see, got my socket there, my extension attached to it. Let's zoom out for a little bit. And I want you to guys to see what I'm doing here. It's, like I said, this on camera is really hard to show. You see this motion? Uh, you're going to have to work with two hands. You take off slack, and it doesn't matter where you want to grab it. Uh, usually at the idlers, it's a lot easier to slide the belt off, but that is what you want to do. Super important point that I definitely want to make sure that you guys are aware is you actually, this ratchet right here, you want to start off in a high of a point as possible because what happens is when you take the tension off, then the ratchet goes in this direction, and then you might not be able to take it off. So you want to start off actually in the position in which I'm at. And another another thing is, I actually do take the belt off on this side because I work with both hands and uh, makes your life a lot easier to do so. 
Take a few slack with this one, meaning with your right hand, and then with the left hand on the other side, remove the belt. Here we go, guys. So this is the angle. Let's see. You got to ratchet up. Take the slack with your left hand. Remove the belt out of the idler and out of the, the power steering column. And you're done. It's going to cock back a little bit, and you're good to go. You can now take the ratchet out. As you can see, I want to show you exactly step by step. See, I got it off of this idler, this guy right there. It is so hard to get these angles right. But that's the game question. We take it out of that guy, and then your power steering pump, and you're good to go. You just got to work out the belt, and uh, we'll go from there. Here we have another key point of this process. Uh, you're going to get to the point in which the belt that you are trying to remove is wrapped around your fan assembly. Uh, well, that's because you do have to uh, basically feed it like so and slowly turn the fan and keep doing that. And eventually you are going to be able to free up the belt altogether. How uh, well am I going to be able to do that on camera? I'm not really sure, but hopefully you guys catch the drift. Uh, that is eventually the way you're going to feed your new belt back in there. You see, oh, I might actually be able to do this on camera. I just did. Um, and there you have it. There's one belt removed from your Forerunner. Uh, yes, I choose not to use gloves. And another side note, guys, I did take my wedding band off. You might want to keep uh, any jewelry out of your hands just to make your life a lot easier. But there you have it. I mean... This is a poor example. I am clearly just doing this so that I can show you guys how to remove the belt because this belt right here is roughly 60,000 miles, which poses the question that some of you might have. When should I replace my belt? Well, it depends who you ask. To be honest with you, I think if you give your belt 100,000 miles, I think that's an easy one to remember. Uh, they can actually last a lot longer than that, but that's totally up to you. Uh, as you can see, I did have a little bit of a noise, which I'm now going to tackle. But for those of you that are here for the belt replacement only, I'll leave a little uh, marker at the side there for you to skip to so that you can uh, go to the portion in which I show you how to install the belt. So in case you guys are wondering why I'm actually replacing these idler pulleys, uh, keep in mind my truck does have 176,000 miles and as you can see just visually looking at them uh, They've actually had quite a life and most importantly You hear that? Uh, yeah, that's a baby in the background And of course because I tend to be a little OCD I uh, Not replacing the screw with a new one, but it is like new Yeah I just like to do it like that. Uh, can you blame me? I'm not sure, but let's go ahead and put her back over there. So guys, just a small little correction from before. Um, a little deceiving, but I've seen this before. You see how, what it looks like to be a little washer and a, a little cover in the back there. Well, I can guarantee you guys that neither one of them does have such thing. So don't worry about that. All you're gonna encounter is pulley, screw, pulley, screw, and the last one, which is the very bottom one, is also a screw, but this one is actually much deeper, just for comparison. The one that sits taller here versus that, see the difference? So this one is gonna have taller screw and the one with the taller screw is the very bottom idler the one all the way on the bottom small little trick guys I'm about to install the very last idler here um, feel free to do this or not uh, I personally stuff like this I don't mind doing it because it's like a peace of mind a little bit of thread locker uh, this particular one is red they make the blue one, blue one, not as, as strong. And you don't have to go completely crazy with this. i show you in a second exactly how much I actually am putting in these screws. 
See that? Just a little bit. That's all you need. Put them in, torque them to 40 pounds, foot pounds of torque. 40 foot pounds of torque. I gotta be honest, the cold doesn't help me very much, but. So when everything's said and done, uh, you definitely want to do the same deal. Make sure it's free, spinning as it should. Good to go. So we got one, two idlers, and last but not least, where are you, where are you? Ah, she's hiding, she's hiding. Eh, there she is, that guy right there. See what I mean? This is like so tough to get a nice shot for you guys, but there she is. She wants to hide, but not for long. That's it, let's get this belt in there. This was a trick that was taught to me by my mentor, and you know what? George, I appreciate that. There's a Greek guy, lost track of where he's at now, but if you ever watch him, man, I am still doing the same exact things that you always taught me. And that is, somebody hands you a belt, yes, assume that is the correct belt, but always, always, grab your old one, new one, go like this, chances are, you're not gonna fight yourself when you try to put it on. So yeah, we got the right belt, let's get it in. Again, we're going in with the new belt now. Now I'm only showing you guys this shot because I wanna show you guys that it takes this much and you gotta lean that much in order to make this job happen. And uh, that's why I got the angle. Basically, lean yourself over the engine bay as much as possible so that the whole process is not as a painful situation as uh, it has to be. Okay, going back in, how do we do this? You basically, brand new belt, you wanna shove it into the shroud where your fan is, I know, sounds a little weird, but what you're gonna do is, again, this is probably gonna be super hard to do while holding the camera, but you wanna work your fan around while you work the belt in. The key is to get this belt completely, as he tries to get in my way, on that side. Or this is what you wanna accomplish. You wanna get your belt on this side of the fan. And this is where your little schematic comes into play. You look at the picture and you just replicate the routing of the belt. In Honestly, there's a lot of ways of doing this and I'm gonna to try to show you guys the way I found to be easy. After all, I think that's why you guys tuned in. So let's get right to it. I think actually if I explain it in the schematic, it'll probably be uh, making more sense to you guys. So you right now have the belt around the water pump. Water pump basically sits behind that uh, fan assembly. So what you wanna do is you route the top, give yourself slack so that you can loop it around this guy. And once you're done with this portion, the rest is a breeze, trust me. And as you can see here, zoom in again. You now have the belt installed in the correct location and the uh, AC compressor and also in your power steering uh, pulley pump. Now, side note, super important. Again, guys, just watch how I do here. Stick your arms in there, do not be afraid. I know a lot of this video, you're mostly feeling things and not seeing them. But what I want you to know and be aware of is that your water pump is gonna have these ridges on the outside of the pulley Make sure that the belt is within the inside of the ridge. If you do that, because they have a tendency of moving on you, chances are you're in good shape. Let's see if I can actually get you guys a shot of the water pump pulley, but let's face it, this is literally impossible because it sits, uh, there it is actually. If you look where the arrow is gonna be pointing, the key point I'm trying to make here is that you always, always make sure that the belt is on the inside of that. If you do that, you're gonna be in good shape. It's super easy uh, job to do. And as you can see, I mean, I wasn't timing myself, but uh, three pulleys and one belt, and I got this done in less than an hour. So if I can do it in an, in an hour, I'm pretty sure you can do it as well. And of course, guys, as always, after each job you do, always double check your work. And guess what? That is exactly what I'm gonna do right now. So. Let's get a start with the new belt and pulleys. 
Do we got a squeak? Do we not have a squeak? Guys, and as always, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to smash that like button. If you are not subscribed, I think you're missing out. There's a whole lot more do-it-yourself series episodes coming your way. And as always, don't forget to enjoy your car. And I will catch you guys on the next one.